So guys, I hope you're ready for it today. Today will be a bit different study session. So I've actually, it took me quite a long time to put this together. Not so like mostly because I wanted to get the thought process right. And it's, it actually took me a long time because it brought me to think about how I see ICM. And I'm really curious to hear how you guys find today's session because it's kind of a different sessions. We, I'm going to spoiler this one. I have not a single hand history today. So it's all going to be about how I think about it first, because there's going to be a lot of content on that. We're going to do hand history review, but I share all of that in a bit. So, okay guys. So today, the main thing obviously is our study session. I'm going to be sharing my view on ICM. First, our outlook for April. I'm super excited. I mentioned it already. I want to make sure every hand history will be answered. The second thing is I want to keep doing the daily motivations. Third thing is Igor is going to do a post flop ICM coaching. We're going to, he's going to look at how things change with ICM involved. I'm really excited for that one. I'm definitely going to be joining it. Same for Matthias coaching. He will tackle the topic of preflop ICM. Really curious myself. Like I, you know, a lot of the stuff it's new, it's new for me too. So when we put together coachings, we talk out of our own secrets. We spend time, like Matthias just recently said, he spends eight to 12 hours for each one hour of coaching. And then I'm going to review and take apart Curtis Hanses review. We're going to do a final table review, applying all these ICM concepts, preflop ICM, postflop ICM general thinking, where to exploit, where to deviate. I can't wait for that one. We picked one of his latest deep runs and we're going to review that. So now guys, are you ready? How I see ICM. So I, I really try to sit down for this one and really challenge myself and ask, okay, what is it? You know, what is this word that everyone's using since eight years or whatever, I've heard it in different ways and it, my view on it changed. And I, I had so many conversations about it. The word has fallen in about 10,000 conversations. So I wanted to ask myself, how do I see it? So I'm going to share with you today how I see it. And I'm going to try to hear more from you about how you see it. And then maybe you can learn something together about how to apply it. So today my goal was to learn advanced strategies or an advanced strategy based on simple examples. So I really wanted to break it down to the most profound, most foundational logic. I want to challenge you to question everything you think you know about ICM. And I, I intentionally worded it, you think you know, because really go deep and ask yourself, okay, there's this word in each of your mind, there is this word and there is something connected with it, right? You all have an explanation or something, an application, a way you apply it in game. Like what is your understanding of it? And start asking yourself, why do I believe what I believe? You can apply that to any other topic, but today it's really, why do you believe what you believe about ICM? And I felt going through the coaching, I want to make one thing very, very specific. Be aware of all moments where you feel like, ah, uh, yeah, that's clear. I already know this. Like really become aware of these type of moments because I had a lot of these moments. And when I dug deeper into it, I've been working on this coaching throughout the entire week. And I was like, can I really explain that? Am I really sure about this? Does this really make sense? Is there, is it, is it really how, so when I started asking these questions, then I realized, wow, actually, no, let me think deeper about this. And I, I should have done this years ago. Like I, I put this in the category of like, ah, now I get it. And now I use it. But then I started realizing, wow, maybe there is more to it. Let's start by imagining someone asks you, Hey, what is ICM? I love this meme. So you are just casually urinating and then a guy walks up to you and you got to explain to him what ICM is. Maybe not in the toilet, but now I actually want to challenge you guys. Take a minute and you can do it for yourself, but you can also do it in chat and explain ICM in your own words. How do you understand it? Independent chip model. How do you explain ICM? Okay, ICM is an environment where every decision you take needs to take into consideration that we sometimes gain EV by folding, says Bela. Christoph says the goal of ICM is not to accumulate the maximum amount of chips, but factor in price money jumps. Christopher says it is a mathematical model that describes each stack's value in real money. Okay, so there's been some great answers in the chat. Thank you guys for taking the time and really thinking this through and formulating your own answers. So... Now, do you understand the underlying calculation of ICM? And so just take inventory of yourself. Do you feel like you understand 
how ICM is being calculated. Could you run the math yourself? So before we go into the calculation of ICM, let's think about why is this even a thing, right? Like it's not that ICM is part of no limit holder as a rule, right? It's not, it's not a rule. Like that you, the, the button is a rule and that the small line and the big line, these are rules, but ICM is not a rule. So let's think about why it's even a thing. Why did it come up? Why, who was that person who first said, oh, I, you know, I see M now. Like, well, how did this come up, right? So let's think about this. And it's all about payouts. So if you change the environment, if you change the incentive structure, the optimal no limit hold'em strategy will take this into account. Might mean that it changes... Like that doesn't mean we know how it changes or if it changes at all, but it will adjust according to the environment and the payouts are an environment of maximizing the dollar profit, right? So if we optimize for dollar profit and we change the environment by adding payouts, then the optimal non limit hold'em strategy will take this into account. How it takes it into account, we don't know, but it will take it into account, right? So that's an important first establishment so that we understand that payouts are the key thing to this, not ICM, right? Payouts is the thing, let's call it the rule, the environment that changed, right? So the same way position or blinds, like small blind posting, big blind posting, or that, you know, who's first to act and the options you have, like how these are rules of the game of no limit hold'em, right? How they might be different for PLO, the payouts are now, an additional thing in the environment. So if we optimize for dollar profit, we will take them into account that at no point the word ICM has fallen right now, right? So that's very, very important at this point, right? So let's build it from the, let's build it from the bottom. So why is this so important to consider? So if the environment changes, the optimal strategy changes. If you don't consider this in your game, you will miss out on EV big time and in the most important spots where it's about the most money, final tables, right? So when we look at payouts, the payouts are the steepest or the biggest on final tables or deep into the tournament. And that's where the environment therefore in that regard changes the most. So if there is a change, it's probably the biggest in this area. And if there is a big change and we don't adapt, that's all DV we lose out on. So it is, if you think in that logic, that is probably the part where it matters the most and where we should look at the most and where we can probably make the most money by understanding this concept the most. So understanding this concept of payouts, changing the environment and therefore changing the optimal strategy, we can make a lot of EV and it should be something we very highly prioritize. So now this is super important. It sounds simple again. This might be one of those moments like, ah, it makes sense, but ICM is just a simplified model to try to approximate a very complex environment, which is no limit hold'em poker with payouts. So ICM itself has nothing to do with the optimal solution. It actually has actually nothing to do with the optimal solution because it's a simplified model. So an optimal solution would never include a simplified model, right? So the solution will be different. We have to understand that. It's very, very, very unlikely that the solution will be the same. It's very, very unlikely ICM is showcasing the correct solution, or if you adjust for it, that it will be entirely the effect of payouts. It's more that it is a simplified model that can help us to approximate a very complex environment, which is NL, no limit holding with payouts. Like I, I'm so like I'm so passionate about this because I feel a lot of players think that it's the holy grail or think that it's, you know part of poker in some way. No, it's someone came up with an idea of, oh, okay, you know, let's create a simplified model and let's compare it to a really complex environment so that we can get a better understanding. So it's not the solution and it's merely a concept that we help that can help us to understand poker environments with payouts better. Okay. So that's the gist of what I wanted to say. So now ladies and gents, how does it work? Right. You, I asked you already who can calculate it. How does the ICM calculation work? And I'm going to jump over this part to force you to do it. We're going to look at that later. Let's look at chip EV first. Okay, guys, now you can give me the answers. So we have a first place of a thousand dollars. We have player A, who's a perfect intelligent robot, player B, who's a GTO bot and player C, who's a GTO bot too. So all three GTO bots now 500, 300 and 200 chips. What's a fair chop?
ship EV assumes without edge that the split is equal, right? 500 ships have 50% equity, therefore get $500, okay? That's clear so far. But is it? So guys, is it really? Are we playing flippity flip flip with no nothing? Flippity flip? Or are there maybe other things? Because it's not. First, there's position. So I'm going to, like, this is actually something I, I thought about this and I was like, everyone, almost everyone thinks that chip chop is correct in this winner takes it all scenario. And it's very likely not because first you never play a tournament where you're just suddenly drawing for the button three handed. And that's the position. So there is position, there are EV differences from the get go, because there is someone being button off these three players. The second point, there are stack depth and distribution differences. There are most likely, I'm saying most likely because it, it's impossible for me to prove, but there are most likely EV differences. We didn't talk about how many big blinds this is. So if this distribution is 50 big blinds, 30 big blinds, 20 big blinds, even if all three play optimal, there might be an equity difference because there is equity realization. So if you look at your win rate, you will see it's not the same for each stack depth, right? You have different equity realization for different big blinds. So there might be an EV difference. And I'm, I'm certain there is one. For these different stacks, I'm, I'm saying might be because I cannot prove it. I don't know. But my assumption is that there's a difference. So I would assume, and there's two things here. So first, th that's the, the trick thing, the, the obvious thing. The button obviously has an advantage, right? You know that. It's clear. Keep that in mind. If you do deals with people or whatever, position matters. Position is going to matter if you do ICM or chip chops or whatever. Like if you split things, there's a positional advantage. That person has an EV advantage. He's going to realize more equity. The second thing is stack depth and distribution. So in this scenario, again, I don't 100% know, but I would assume that the shorter player realizes more of his equity. I would assume so. I think there is a slight disadvantage for player B to realize his equity. That would be my guess. And so I believe that in player C shoes, that a chip chop that is 50, 30, 20 is slightly worse. So I think he has a slight advantage compared to his 20% equity. So keep that in mind that like one of the most seemingly obvious things where you guys thought is like, oh, okay, you know, it's just 500, 300, 200. It might be not because we are not playing flippity flip flip. We are playing poker and poker is about realizing equity and it's not always equal. So now again, ICM. It's just a simplified model to try to approximate a very complex environment. Repeat after me. So let's look at it. Do you know how to calculate it? And we had that question before, but I want to get to that point. So how do we calculate ICM? I think the best explanation that, that stuck in my mind is think of it as a lottery model. So imagine for each chip, you get a ticket, okay? So player A, 500 tickets, player B, 300 tickets, player C, 200 tickets. So you get tickets according to your stack and you put them all in a bowl, right? So all these tickets in a bowl. And now you draw. So you draw the first place. And now we have 500 tickets for player A, 300 for player B, 200 for player C. And you draw for the first price out of the bowl. So in that case, Player A gets it 50% of the time, player B 30% of the time, and player C 20% of the time. That's clear, right? Now, after you got drawn, we repeat this game infinite times. So after you get drawn, all your tickets come out and the next place gets drawn. So if player A gets first place, he gets out, and now player B and player C compete for second place, right? So player B still has 300 tickets and player C has 200 tickets and now gets drawn again for second place, okay? And then we'll, let's say player B gets second place, then player C gets drawn for third place. So now we repeat that infinite amount of times and we look at the distribution and then you add on all these outcomes. That's how it is calculated. So understand that it functions with this lottery model, okay? That according to the stack size, you get, Curtis explained it actually really well. A model that distributes price money based on stack sizes estimates the probability of each player. It's not estimating it, but taking it. Of each player finishing first, second, third, it's in pace them accordingly. The model assumes there are no future hands to be played, so it's limited to the inputs it has at the time, which is mainly stack distribution and payout structure. Yes, it's not mainly, it's only. 
So it's only taking payouts and it's only taking your chip stack. And then it's distributing it based on a lottery model. Whereas depending on, on your chip stack, it attributes you a percentage for each place. 